so on all the forums and stuff, you see things saying how good hyper-threading is for video editing and other tasks and stuff. So, I really wanted to test hyper-threading, so I'm going to run my system twice. Once with hyper-threading and once without. And I prepared a pretty good series of tests to find out if you, how much it actually helps. So here I have a list of programs I'm going to be testing. So I'm going to be testing 3ds Max. So in 3ds Max I made a simple scene that used ray tracing. It takes about a minute to render without um, anything. I have a sequence in After Effects. It's 4K, 10 seconds. It takes another minute or two. Made about 40 frames in Maya. Um, Autodesk's Maya. Photoshop, I have an image and I'm going to have it go and mess with settings. That takes about 18 seconds on my CPU. Um, I'm going to rerun them all in short big sparks, and then I have a one minute thing I'm going to export as 4K H.264. So I'm going to go run all these benchmarks now, and then I'm going to show you the results with and without hyperfine. Okay, so I ran all the benchmarks with all the different programs here, and here's what we have in the performance differences. So here are all the times with hyperthreading, here's the times without. So we see 3ds Max, which is doing a lot of ray tracing, and it's one huge scene, is taking a whole 28% improvement, which is almost as good as the 30% you see online a lot. So this is the best case scenario I got, I was only getting 28% improvement. After Effects was seeing 23%. It was probably also due to how After Effects deals with multiple threads and stuff, but it's still a pretty big jump. Maya, I was doing a lot of small frames. If I was doing big frames, I think I'd be seeing more around this change because they use the same style of rendering engine. But with a ton of small frames, I was seeing only about 9.1% improvement, which isn't really that big. Photoshop, I saw an 11% improvement. Premiere, I saw an 11% improvement. But I was using GPU, it would be slightly higher if I was using just CPU, but I think most people these days are using their GPU to help them assist rendering. So this shows us that, and also um, another note when I was testing it, the temperatures on the CPU went down I think about 5 to 6 degrees on average with max load. So this does show that it does use more power, there is a bit more performance, but it's not a lot more. It's, if you're doing things that are optimized, like ray tracing with rendering and stuff, it does help it a lot. But if you're doing standard video editing, it's an improvement, but not huge. So, is going i7 worth it? If you aren't doing it professionally, and the 10% isn't worth it, it's, I would highly suggest just going with an i5. And also, almost every other program, like games and stuff, have been shown to have almost no difference. These programs should have the biggest difference of all programs. So thanks for watching my little benchmark on um, hyper-threading, and thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe. Bye.